Okay guys, uh, this is um, the Lens Fly. It's my new YouTube channel. I thought I would make a channel that's based on one of my main passions, which is photography. And um, yeah, I've been doing photography for about six years now, fully. Uh, beforehand, when I was a kid, I always used to pick up the Polaroid or whatever I had next to me, or disposable, waterproof disposable on holidays. And uh, you know, I used to play around with it, but it's taken me a couple of years to get into the swing of things. So I've been I've been doing it for about six years now, fully. Um, and on this video, I want to kind of give you beginners an approach to purchasing your first set of DLSR kit. People that are willing to kind of spend the money and kind of push their hobby that little further and go and buy um, a camera body and a lens or two, hopefully. Now. The most important thing when picking your DLSR is not well, when I started it never have it had it, but um, nowadays you have a large and varied choice when it comes between ISOs, your shutter speeds, video quality, over picture quality. Now these are the two things I'm going to highlight the most. Um, <clears throat> my first digital SLR was this one here. <clears throat> Nikon D60 with a Tamron 7300mm telephoto along with the 18-55 to that I'm actually using on my D7000 at the moment to record this so uh, it just goes to show that just because it's a beginner lens doesn't mean it's a bad lens um, especially when you're on budget um, now this camera is pretty clunky it's got one dial at the top Pretty small screen, pretty small body to be honest. I mean, if any of you guys are actually got DLSRs and kind of realise the, the camera body size in comparison to the lens, it kind of the lens <laughs> lens overpowers it ever so slightly. Um, but it's a nice camera. This is a nice beginner camera. 10.2 megapixels, um, three and a half frames a second, four frames a second, depending. You're not really going to be taking the fucking Grand National on this now, are you? You know, so it's not a it's not um, a big thing to have that. Um, Got the four classic buttons at the bottom, on the side. Sorry, if you find a hot shoe for your lens, or for your lens for your flash, you got your uh, main flash, like pop up flash, as I like to call it. Um, eject button. You know, it's got the screws, got the works. It's a very rugged camera. It's not, you know, weather tight or anything. It's plastic, but um, it does the job. And I mean, I picked this, that, and the lens up for about six hundred and eighty quid back in the day. I think about four or five years ago and um, yeah to be honest uh, nothing wrong with it I could turn it on now if it had the battery in it it's on charge take a few shots process them come out uh, come out top now the only problem with this is the ISOs that I can remember the ISO only goes up to 1600 or 3200 I forget because it's a long time since I used this camera um, starts up at 100 so it's not bad uh, one memory card slot now, out of all you guys who are wanting to jump into the DLSR world, you will only get one memory card slot. One. Um, not until you start developing with Nikon's range anyway, not until you start developing onto the D7000. Um, to be honest, it's only been two years, two, three years, since they've added the dual card slot onto half frame cameras. Um, it's always been a sort of luxury with buying a full frame top end camera that you would get the uh, the two memory card slots. Now, um, battery life. Don't expect any miracles from your first camera's battery life. Um, <laughs> this one took 60 out of real good D60 out of real good battery life actually. I take at least 800 shots before it started getting a bit lethargic and started you know kind of like telling me no, don't do it again. Um, but for a, a for a beginner camera, this is a solid build. If you think about getting yourself a low end telephoto and a medium to high end general use, which the eighteen to fifty five is, to be honest, um, I think on half frame it will evaluate to the crop factor. Uh, you've got about twenty seven to eighty two point five mil, I think, because um, obviously it's uh, the half frame. You get you get more of an ex extension on millimeters. Um, which is a bonus, but um, also which the bonus with half frame is you can just buy half frame lenses, DX lenses. Like you don't need to go and buy 
a lens that will fit a full frame because to be honest if this is your first DLSR I don't know a lot of people that will jump from this sort of body all the way up to a full frame so there isn't any point in buying a lens that's adequate for both cameras um, yeah that's, that's 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 a big thing as well watch what you buy if you're not too sure don't be afraid to like ask <laughs> ask about you know just you want to be humble you know there's more people in this world that will know more information about you than you could ever know when it comes to photography and they're willing to help you on forums you know I've been to a few forums myself got a bit of a pickle ask a few mates even our staff at the shops you know they're willing to help you because at the end of the day you're there to buy something and if they can show in the right direction and maybe ask you to buy something else as well you know but um yeah so this is a stable system um I wouldn't get anything lower than 10.2 megapixels not in this day and age anyway um just because it wouldn't be worth it and it would, it would, it would depreciate too quickly uh, frames per second like I said it's a low end DLSR if you're going to be looking to take pictures of I don't know footballers or bloody dragonflies or planes or trains or whatever I, mean, I don't know about trains but anything that moves fast basically you want to take a varied amount of frames per second um, I'd start from what I've got in the Nikon range the Z7000 or start off with the Canon 600D those two are the high end the top end um, or in that range half half frame cameras now if you're looking about going higher than that and you're going to photo journalism and you know it's your last day of uni you're getting all excited and you want a nice camera then obviously go for those sort of things but if you're actually this this sort of build, this sort of body caters the enthusiastic amateurs uh, be it from the guy who's 15 and wants to learn photography at school all the way up to the, I don't know, the football mum who takes the kids on Sunday matches to take a few shots with the camera that her husband bought her but that's, that's, not, that's not insulting the, 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 um, the body at all because that's what it's made for, that's the intention of it, that's why it's lightweight, it's compact and uh, yeah, brilliant buy. Now, <clears throat> I'll advise buying yourself a cleaning kit. This is a cleaning kit I've got here. Um, excuse the filter. You just basically got I've got a blowy thing. I've got lens cloth. That's most important. Blowy things kind of just blown a little off the front of the lens. Um, got your mount cap on the front of your DLSR these are this is my lens pen it's a very important bit of kit it's got a little brush that you can in and out sort of motion you pay the 20 quid for doing that basically it's just a fine brush for uh, taking bits off mirror and taking just off the front of your lens I've always got this little it's a little screwdriver kit if I open it up it's got the kit for my first tripod basically, um, my new tripod, my Joss, I've got uh, what I'm basically, my camera's on now with the uh, professional ballpoint head, that comes with a self tapping screw with um, like a, a kind of like a thread holder at the top so you don't actually have to get a screwdriver end into it, um, that just what the, when you pay a bit more you get that, I mean it's not, it's not worth the money just getting it for that. But you know, when once you when you find your feet, you kind of appreciate what kit you do need and what kit you don't need. Now, these are all pretty easy things to come by. They're not hard. They're not specialist. You go into any shop. This kit cost me about forty-five pounds. Um, if you don't want to spend that much, uh, go to, um, to your Jessops or your Jacobs or whatever you have in America or whatever you have in Tokyo or whatever, and say, look, have you got a few lens wipes and a blower, and that's it. And it'll probably cost you about five pounds. Um, now, variation of lenses. I've talked about the telephoto, the low end telephoto. I've talked about the general use, which is the 18 to 55, which I'm running on now. Um, talk about this little acorn. Now, this is the 1.8 Nikon 50mm lens. Um, if you want it to have autofocus properties and the ilk you'll need to buy yourself a camera with an autofocus motor built in like the 7000 has, the 90 has 
correct me if I'm wrong, I think the 50 has as well. But that's an old camera, and I wouldn't advise getting it. Um, now, the cool thing with this is, it equivalates to a 75mm. So, if you've got an 18 to 55 and you're thinking about, hang on a second, I'm not needing to use a telephoto, I want to do portrait work. This is probably the number one lens you'll need. You won't need anything else. Nothing else. Um, it's, it's, it's spot on for everything. It's prime, so you get a real nice aperture. You get 1.8 on this. Uh, I can show you the aperture on this manually. Yeah, real nice aperture on that. Go open that. Here, so I don't know if you can see that. Real nice. That's a fair bit of lighting. Um, perfect for lighting, detailed images. Uh, brilliant for night time. Also very good for video recording. Uh, obviously, the more light you let in, the more the better and sharper the images, the better colours are on video. Um, I'm not an expert in video, as you can tell. I'm <laughs> really not. Um, I'm a stills person myself. Um, that is a worthwhile bit of kit, and I trust me, that is probably going to be the, the the cheapest lens you'll ever buy. It's under a hundred pounds at the moment. Um, you want to talk about getting the one point four aperture or the the one point two? You talk about two hundred and fifty, maybe four hundred and fifty pounds. Now, to be honest, I don't see the need in them. I never have done. I'm thinking, you know, if you need to let that much light in, why don't you just get yourself a tripod and have an extended exposure but you know different people different means different needs and all that lot it's all very part of the time and when you need it and when you don't need it um, this is my new lens this is my Nikon 55 to 300 mil which equals up to an 82.5 to 450 mil uh, please message me if I'm wrong um, and yeah, it's brilliant. I've had it for I've had it since Christmas. Brilliant lens. Couldn't ask for any more. It's VR, second generation VR, and second generation Sonic Wave motor in it. Um, this is this is my top end kit at the moment, along with my D7000. Now, um, I've been doing, like I said, photography properly with a DLSR for about six years now, and with a low end budget as well. So it's taken me six years to collect all the camera kit that you've seen now. Um, Apart from obviously the camera I'm recording from, I've got a tripod and I've got a film camera I've got given. You get bits given here and then, you know, when you've got family members and nice friends, you know, they'll go, hang on a second, I've got this, I don't use it, or I've got this and I don't use it, you know, you're willing to have it, and um, that's how you build your collection up. And you get, you know, kind of, for me, it kind of, um, kind of makes me a bit excited when I get a new bit of kit, you know, because it's like, well, someone's actually been generous enough to give me that and I can tamper around it and have a play with it and check on the internet and in turn that will get you interested in something else in photography hopefully and you know, it's all it's, it's all, it's all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, this has got the VR on it. Like, this telephoto hasn't. This has, this is just normal. It's got a macro function. I really wouldn't use the macro function because it's just... It just makes it longer. I mean, it's a baseball bat now. I'm not joking. Um, <laughs> it makes it longer, and it, it's just I don't know. It's not really that good. It's, I mean, it's a low end lens. What do you expect? But for the price, I mean, you could pick up one of these for like ninety quid. Um, so you know, that that these two lenses, one hundred and ninety pounds with the body, two hundred. You could you could buy this kit like this for about easily under four hundred quid these days. And I mean, this it's nice kit. It's not. It's not rubbish. Don't let anyone tell you that yeah, that kit is rubbish because it's not it's just not as good as the kit they've got alright just ex <laughs> don't let the DSR like control you when you're taking your shots you know it's a tool at the end of the day it's not a you know it's not a fashion statement you know I've got friends that walk around with 20-30 year old film cameras and they're enjoying it you know it's a tool you know would you you know you wouldn't put an age on an Allen key or oh, you can't use that Allen key it's too old you know you <laughs> people shouldn't do it but they do it you'll find out that there are a lot of snobs um, a lot of tech snob people that go out and buy big lenses because they think they need to use them they don't it's kind of just a a, a, a talking point um, like this example 55 to 300mm Nikon 70 to 300mm uh, Nikon is 200 quid more expensive than this same aperture um, it's better if you use it on a full frame if you use it on a half frame you know whatever it's just it's the same animal, it's the same thing, come on. 
um, we just start off lower than them, so you're getting a better range. So if you were to pick the 18 to 55 up with your kit, if you're having a low end kit range, yeah, you'll be able to pick up an 18 to 55 of any Nikon if it comes with a bundle kit on them. A, a low end DLSR, pick that up and say I want one of these as well, and then you've managed to get from 27 mil all the way up to 450 mil on two lenses for under an amount equal to about the same as probably a D7000. Um, so it's good value for money. Um, yeah, and. On that note, I'd like to talk about finance and all that lot. Um, personally, myself, I wouldn't go finance anything. Um, I would wait, save up the cash, and then do it. You get more of an achievement out of it. I feel, anyway, it's just a personal opinion. I feel I get more of a, a buzz out of you know saving up money and then going and spending it all and everything. Don't finance your stuff unless you're making money from your photography. Because then it doesn't come a hobby. It comes a hobby. It comes a stress. And you know when you get stressed, I I know myself. If I become stressed when I'm taking my shots, I kind of call it a day and walk off home because I don't have the right mindset for it. And also be patient. Um, don't expect to pick up your DLSR and within two months make stuff. You know that experts will say, "Wow, that's amazing." You know, just don't take your time. You know, get to know your DLSR. Be it a Canon, be it a, a Sigma. Yes, Sigma make one DLSR. Um, be it a Nikon, be it an Olympus, be whatever, get used to it. Don't jump overboard and walk out and think, yes, I can do this, I can do it. Everyone does it, I've done it. The person who, another guy who's done it for seven, eight years has done it. Everyone's done it. They picked up the DLSR, stuck the lens on and taking the shots thinking they're a pro, but it doesn't work. You need to spend a solid week, not reading the book, maybe read bits if you're not too sure. Most of the cameras these days, come with a little info button on the corner and you just select the thing you want and press info and it comes up with a little menu, you know, this, that and the other and it's it's very useful. Very, very, very useful. Can't stress that enough. Just take your time. You know, the best shots done on a digital SLR were done with taking time. The best landscapes were done taking time. Always, always figure out what kit you want. You know, always before you walk out that door, say, what do I need to take today? What image am I wanting to take? You know, if you're taking landscape, you're not going to bring your telephoto with you. You're going to be bringing your 18 to 55. You're going to be bringing, you know, the, 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 I don't know, bloody 50 mil. You're going to be bringing something that gives you some sort of a wide angle perspective on what you're taking a picture of. Um, now, that's it for this video. I hope this has helped you. There will be a second one coming soon, I hope. Um, I don't know what it's about, but I'll surprise you. Thanks for watching. This has been The Lens Fly. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it's helped those guys out who are trying to uh, get on the DLSR ladder, so to speak. Thank you for watching.